the renegade mathematician here with a friendly warning. This video contains a real mathematical proof. So if you got the guts, I would strongly recommend you follow along with a piece of paper, a pencil, a pen, whatever, and you pause the video as soon as you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So, there you go. Proceed with caution. Okay, so we're going to resume our discussion of the um, permutations as products of cycles. And previously we proved the theorem that every permutation is either the identity, a single cycle, or the product of disjoint cycles. And so what we'll prove this time around is the proposition that every cycle can be expressed as the product of one or more transpositions. Every cycle can be expressed as the product of one or more transpositions. That's a big deal too. So here we go with the proof. So let the cycle a sub 1 through a sub r be any cycle on the set 1 through n. And consider the product of transpositions, uh, that product of transpositions there. I'm not going to say it out loud. Henceforth, I'll just refer to it as, quote unquote, that product of transpositions. So we can verify by direct computation that the cycle 1, uh, sorry, a sub 1 through a sub r is equal to the product that product of transpositions. And that's what we'll do. So, but let's start that just with an analysis of what the cycle a sub 1 through a sub r does. Okay. In general, the cycle a sub 1 through a sub r moves a sub k to the a sub k plus 1th position for all k in the set 1 through r minus 1. Okay. Do you agree with that? The cycle a sub 1 through a sub r moves a sub k to the a sub kth position, provided k is in the set 1 through r minus 1. In other words, provided k is, provided a sub k is either a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, all the way up to a sub r minus 1, then it will move it to the right one position. Okay? Or, moving on now, a sub k to the a sub kth position for all k in the set r plus 1 through n. In other words, right, if a sub k is not in that cycle, right, then it will move it to, it won't move it, it'll just leave it alone, right? It moves a sub k to the a sub kth position. And it'll move a sub r to the a sub 1th position. Well, what does that mean? Look at the cycle. It means it'll take the last entry and move it full circle back to the a sub 1th position. That's what it'll do. So I hope we're in agreement. Uh, I hope we're in agreement that that's what the cycle a sub one through a sub r does in general. That's what the cycle does. And what we're going to show is that that product of transpositions does exactly the same thing. That's how we're going to prove this. Okay. Likewise, for k less than r, the product of transpositions a sub r a sub k plus one times a sub r a sub k moves a sub k to the a sub rth position, right, that's the inside cycle, which is then moved to the a sub k plus 1th position, that's the outside cycle. So if you're not sure about that, go ahead and pause the video, scope that out, until you realize that that product of transpositions moves a sub k to the a sub rth position, the inside cycle does that, which is then moved to the a sub k plus 1th position. That's what happens. But then, what do we get? Okay, since factors to the left of the product of transpositions a sub r a sub k plus 1 times a sub r a sub k in the product, that product. By the way, scope out the middle. I've uh, kind of fleshed out the middle of that so that you can see the product of transpositions smack dab in the middle there. The a sub r a sub k plus 1 times a sub r a sub k. It's right in the middle. Locate it before we move on. Okay, since factors to the left of the product of transpositions a sub r a, a sub k plus 1 times a sub r a sub k in the product, that product, do not contain a sub k. Notice that when you look to the left, none of them have a sub k in it. 
then a sub k stays in the a sub k plus 1th position, right? Right? All right, moving on. Thus, that product of transpositions moves a sub k to the a sub k plus 1th position for all k in the set 1 through r minus 1. Right? Right. Okay, but notice that's exactly what the original cycle does. Okay. All right, so we've got that one point down. Okay, so if k is bigger than r now, then a sub k does not appear in the product, well, that product of transpositions, right? Because there's nothing bigger than, there, there, there's nothing after a sub r in that product of transpositions, right? If you look to the left, there's a sub r, but it only goes down from there, right? So if k is bigger than r, then a sub k is not in there, okay? And furthermore, a sub k is moved to the, well, it's not moved, it's left in the a, a sub kth position by default because it doesn't appear in the product of cycles. Oh, but look, that's exactly what our original cycle does. It takes a sub k and leaves it alone, right? So there's our second point. It agrees on two of those three conditions. Okay, now since a sub r a sub 1, that transposition, moves a sub r to the a sub 1th position, and a sub 1 does not appear to the left of a sub r a sub 1 in the product, that product. Okay, so locate a sub r a sub 1. It's right at the end to the right of that product, the very last one. You'll see it. Okay. So since a sub r, a sub 1 moves a sub r to the a sub 1's position, and a sub 1 does not appear to the left of a sub r, a sub 1, in the product, that product, then that product moves a sub r to the a sub 1th position. Right? Right. But look, that's what our original cycle does. It moves a sub r to the a sub 1th position. All right, so now we've got, we've got the, the original cycle and our product of transpositions agreeing on all three points. Uh, but that would mean that um, the original cycle, our arbitrary cycle, is equal to that product of transpositions. And so therefore, since we started with an arbitrary cycle and transformed it into a product of transpositions, then we must be able to do that for any, trans, um, for any cycle. That is, any cycle we must be able to write as a product of transpositions. So QED, we're done. We proved it. Okay, see you next time.